Uh, good morning. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Kevin Kelly, and I'm the Director of the Information and Education Division at the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources. I want to thank uh, everybody who's on uh, for joining us uh, for this media availability. Um, as you might have noticed, uh, gotten the notification, we are recording this availability, and uh, we'll be providing a, a replay on the department's YouTube channel uh, after we're done. Uh, so we're here uh, following yesterday's announcement uh, that Kentucky has uh, joined the ranks of the many states that have detected chronic wasting disease. Uh, that's the always fatal uh, neurologic disease that affects deer, elk, and other species in the deer family. Uh, just to quickly recap, uh, two independent types of tests were performed on tissue collected from a two-and-a-half-year-old male white-tailed deer that was harvested by a hunter in Ballard County uh, in November. Uh, both tests uh, yielded the same result. Uh, the deer was infected with uh, the abnormal proteins that cause CWD. So today, uh, Deputy Commissioner Gabe Jenkins and State Wildlife Veterinarian Dr. Christine Casey have uh, graciously agreed to take some time out of their schedules to answer your questions. Uh, before we uh, before we get going on that, I just want to provide a little bit of background um, about their experience. So uh, Deputy Commissioner Jenkins holds a bachelor's degree in wildlife management and a master's degree in biology, both from EKU. Uh, he started with the department in 2007 as a biologist in the deer and elk program and was promoted in 2014 to deer and elk program coordinator. While working within the deer and elk program, he worked on various aspects of deer and elk management, wildlife disease, elk translocation and research. In 2019, he joined the Information and Education Division as its director. And since 2022, uh, he has been a deputy, been a deputy commissioner at, at the department. Uh, Dr. Casey has been with uh, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife since 2019. She's originally from Vermont, where she received a Bachelor of Science degree in Wildlife Biology. She completed a Master of Science degree in Veterinary and Biomedical Sciences at the University of Georgia. Her master's coursework and research focused on wildlife diseases and provided her with the background in microbiology and diagnostic research. Uh, after earning her master's, Dr. Casey stayed in Georgia to attend vet school. And while in vet school, she enrolled in a dual degree program and earned a master in public health, in addition to her doctor of veterinary medicine degree. Her master in public health emphasis was in infectious disease epidemiology. So uh, with that out of the way, um, I'd like to welcome um, Deputy Commissioner Jenkins and, and Dr. Casey, and just like to start uh, with one question for, for, each, for both of you. Um, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife has been preparing for chronic wasting disease for over 20 years. Now that it's been detected in the state, what's your reaction? Thanks, Kevin. I'll go ahead and lead us off and uh, appreciate everybody being here and um, tuning in with us today and looking forward to our conversations and any questions you guys uh, might have. But, um, but for us, it's, it's one that um, we feel confident in. We have a, a great group of staff that have a lot of expertise in, in disease management, and it's one we've been preparing for for 20 years. You know, we've had a response plan that we've shared with the public for this entire time. And that plan kind of outlines everything that we will we will do uh, in an event like what we're here to talk about today. And that plan kind of changes and modifies through time as new research is, is provided and other states find the disease. And we're able to learn and adapt that plan and uh, evolve through time. So, you know, we've 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 practiced, we're prepared for it. And, um, you know, I, th I think that uh, we will make sound decisions moving forward and. Uh, hopefully do the very best we can to, to, uh, to monitor our herds because they're very valuable to us and they're, they're a huge economic impact to the state of Kentucky and uh, a blessing for us all. Yeah, um, to piggyback off of what Gabe said, um, I'm, uh, I'm optimistic. I have all the confidence in our team and the experts that we've put together. Like uh, Gabe said, we've been preparing for this for quite some time. Um, you know, it's, We've had concerns with six out of the seven states having the disease already. And so, you know, we've really been beefing up our surveillance in the past couple of years. And I think we've got a good team together to respond to this situation here in Kentucky. Deal. Uh, thank you both again for being here. Uh, at this time, we're going to open it up for questions. We have a smaller, uh, smallish group. So um, 
if you have a question, just unmute yourself. I would ask that you uh, state your name and affiliation uh, b before your question, uh, but the floor is open uh, for questions now. Hey there, y'all. Uh, oh, you go ahead. Gotcha, okay. Uh, hi, my name is Derek Oakerly. I'm the news director for WKMS, the NPR station out of Murray State University. Uh, Talk to me about how this case was detected. I know there was a surveillance zone established uh, after Tennessee had detected uh, a case. I think that was later decided that there actually was not a case in a border county, but there was like a four or five county surveillance zone established. Ballard County was not in that. How was this case detected? Yeah. I can speak to that if you'd like. Um, so we have routine surveillance across the state. So we sample all the counties in the state. Um, and this one being adjacent to our surveillance zone, we set certain sampling goals for all the counties. Um, and so a lot of deer that are harvested in kind of adjacent counties, they can only go to certain tax service or processors because they have a preference. And so this deer actually came through um, a processing station where we had staff and we were able to collect a sample. Um, and then that's that's how we got the sample is through our routine hunter surveillance that came through a, a, a check station. Gotcha. Can you all talk about uh, plans and precautions going forward now that there has been a case pre uh, detected? Uh, what, what are hunters, particularly, I guess, in Ballard County, uh, supposed to do now, I know that Ballard is, is a pretty big hunting center. There's a lot of like economic impact associated with the hunting industry there. So great question, Derek, and you know, the one that, that lots of folks have, have asked already. Um, for us, we're kind of winding down deer season right now. When modern gun season is when the bulk of our deer harvest happens in November. And you know we have late muzzleloader deer season coming in Saturday. So, um, for, for us right now, we're really just kind of going to gauge what what the science tells us. So we know we have this deer. Uh, we have collected samples, thousands of samples that are still pending um, across the state. So we're, we're just going to kind of sit back and see what we find and what Tennessee finds and what all of our neighboring states find and then make some recommendations for 2024. Um, I, I will say that we are going to have a uh, a special called commission meeting with our board next week to be able to kind of discuss and inform them and uh, have that interaction with them to uh, to kind of lay out what our plans will be. But as of right now, we're, we're just encouraging our hunters to, uh, to have that animal tested. Um, they can bring it to some of our testing facilities. We have locations where they can drop that off. Uh, but also to say we have a very traditionally have a very low harvest in Ballard County for the rest of the season. And so, you know, we have a, a telechecking method that each successful hunter has to check that animal. And then we have the opportunity to interact with them one-on-one -on -one and uh, work with them at that point. Hey there y'all, uh, Derek Parham with WBKO. Uh, I know a lot of folks uh, are very focused on diagnosing CWD after the animal's already been harvested. Uh, but for a lot of folks, maybe they're not hunters, maybe they're not super familiar with that process. What kind of signs and symptoms uh, should they be looking for when they see living deer uh, kind of out in the wild? At what point uh, should people uh, maybe start to be worried or start to let you all know that there's an issue in their local deer populations? Derek, I'll take that one. And thank you. That's a great question. Um, and, and often kind of a source of confusion for hunters and, and the public. So the thing about this disease um, and what makes it kind of so insidious is it takes a long time for deer to actually develop symptoms. And so what we call the incubation period from when you're infected to when you have symptoms is about on average 16 months. So, I mean, that's a little over a year, almost a year and a half that an animal can be on the landscape and look completely healthy but be infected. And so that's what's so important about our hunter harvest surveillance, um, because those are detecting early detections in a healthy animal. But in terms of symptoms in a, in a sick deer, once they're actually demonstrating those, I mean, you can be, it could be a skinny deer, there could be excess salivation, 
um, circling, some type of indication that there's they're not doing well, um, like a neurologic symptom, ataxic or incoordination. Um, and we actually have a sick deer reporting form that's online and we encourage the public to use that. And that's actually, you know, how we do a lot of surveillance. Um, the public tells us that they're seeing sick animals and then we can get those in real time and respond to them. Awesome. And as we're kind of getting towards the end of deer season, that's probably going to be when we see the most uh, examples of harvested animals testing positive for this. Uh, but for the rest of the year, is that sick deer reporting form the best way uh, to let you all know that there's a, an issue in a deer population? Yes. And so that's open year round um, because there's a lot of different diseases on the landscape. Another difficult thing about this um, disease, chronic wasting, is that a lot of the symptoms are very similar to other diseases that we see. And so that's why it's so important that we get reports of sick animals, because we want to make sure that it's not chronic wasting disease. So we always pull that sample. And, and as you mentioned, most of our hunter harvest, you know, this is the time where we're starting to wind down and the season wraps up. Um, in the spring and summer, we still want those sick deer reports we follow up on those. And that's also part of our time where we're getting samples from roadkill and these mortality investigations. And, you know, just to piggyback off that a little bit too, we're, we're sampling year round. So we have a, a sampling strategy, but just because deer season is over about to come to a close, it doesn't mean we stop. So we have, we have goals in, in each County and that's, you know, what we're working to achieve, but also, when it's a sick animal, that's that's a, a highly risky animal or an animal that we really want to get our hands on. So one that we want to try to get off the landscape and have it have it tested. Are there uh, increased costs or anything to like ramping up detection, uh, like ramping up testing and anything like that for the state? So I, I can start and, and Dr. Casey, if you want to fill in. So, uh, you know, that's a service that we offer uh, in, in our surveillance zone for free to our hunters. So if they want to uh, to do that, um, we have a, a drop off locations all across the state where hunters can drop off the, the head of a deer. And you can find that on our website. Uh, you'll, you'll hear us say this a lot, fw.ky.gov backslash CWD. Um, so it's our website, Chronic Waste and Disease, that has all the information of, that we're talking about, those locations. Um, so you know, where we tell folks to look at it and, and an opportunity to have that have that animal tested if they're interested in it. Yeah, and just to follow up after that, like so there's there are these freezer drop-off locations across the state, and that's a free service. So folks who get that, and one of the things is is it does require them putting the head in the freezer. And so an animal that you harvest, like a buck that you may want to keep the rack that you're planning on your own mounting, if you still want to get it tested, um, you just need to work with your regional biologist because we we collaborate with a lot of taxidermists and processors. And so we're able to go get those samples if we know the hunter wants it tested, um, we can follow up with them. And we do that a lot with our deer and elk. I actually meant increased costs to the state, like taxpayer dollars. Okay, um, well, so currently we have a diagnostic budget um, that allows us to test, you know, up to 10,000 samples. And as you can see from our testing online, uh, we're currently around 5,000. So as of right now, it's not gonna, it doesn't change the cost of the test at all. And so we're, we're able to do that surveillance with our budget that we currently have. Um, what happens generally when diseases or when states have this is they do increase surveillance, but that's mainly because the hunters in that area really want to get their animal tested. And so we may expect to see 10,000 samples next year or even more in another year. Um, that's just really about trying to provide the best service to our hunters and keeping them engaged and wanting to hunt um, and making them feel safe about their, their product that they're eating. And, and Derek, I'll, I'll touch on just this just very briefly. So how the department works and how we're funded, um, we're funded through the, set, the direct sale of hunting and fishing licenses and excise taxes through the federal government on fishing and hunting equipment. And, and we don't receive directly any state tax money. So for us, it, it comes directly from hunters and anglers and the excise taxes on, on equipment that they use to hunt fish. So 
Um, you know, we we try to use that that money wisely in every camp because we have a, a very limited budget and we're not receiving additional funds. And so we try to, and it's why we have the, the testing protocols that we have and focus on those animals that are a higher risk to ensure that we're spending it wisely. Thank you. Yep. So uh, Dalton Godby from uh, uh, WB, DRB in Louisville had a question in the chat. Uh, what are the incentives for Kentucky hunters to bring their harvested deer in for testing? I know we've covered that, but if you could just uh, touch on that again, please. Well, currently um, we do offer aging um, for hunters. So a lot of folks are interested in the age of their deer. So that's one of the main things that we provide is we will age your deer for you um, as well as provide the result. Um, in the future, um, we may explore other incentive programs. Typically incentive programs are used once you have the disease and establish them. So that's something, um, and if you're talking about like incentives as in like earn a buck, or if you're talking about um, any other monetary incentives, something like that. Was that, you think? Well, he didn't, he didn't add any more, any okay. additional context to that, but. Uh, so the, let me, let me touch on that too, just a, a little bit too, uh, for Dalton there is that for me, I, I guess the, the takeaway is as a hunter and somebody who enjoys being out in the woods and, and harvesting deer, and then also feeding that to my family is, one that I want to ensure that what I'm eating and, and what I'm passing on to my friends and family comes from an animal that was healthy. And, you know, as any time, we always recommend that you never, never consume a sick animal and kind of goes without saying. So for me, it's just the incentive of, I want to do the very best that I can when I go to feed my family. So I want to have that animal tested to ensure that the disease is not detected in it before I, before I feed them. So I know uh, this one was harvested in November and y'all began the testing phase then. Are there any others uh, across the state that are currently under review or uh, are maybe of concern right now or, or that have tested positive since then? No, this is our only detection at this time. Um, we do still have some samples pending. If you can, you can see our results that are up online. So we do have results that are pending. Um, and that's something we were talking about when we were talking about assessing at the end of the season. We want to make sure we get our results and we want to be able to compare our results to other states and see what they have before we make any regulatory changes out there. Good deal. Um, any additional questions? Or is, uh, no? Okay. Well, if there are no additional questions, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. I uh, really appreciate everybody for uh, joining us uh, uh, this morning. Uh, we may do a similar format to this again in the future uh, if, it, if it works for everybody. So, uh, just a one way to to be able to reach people across the reporters across the state. So um, as a reminder, uh, replay of this availability will be available later on on the uh, department's YouTube channel. Also, uh, if you're interested in uh, requesting an in-person interview with uh, either uh, Deputy Commissioner Jenkins or Dr. Casey, uh, you can submit those via email to fwmedia at ky.gov. Uh, at the conclusion of this uh, media availability. Uh, we also alluded to it uh, a little bit on this. Uh, we have several web pages devoted to chronic wasting disease and other wildlife health um, diseases uh, on our website. Um, for CWD specifically, it's fw.ky.gov slash CWD. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Dr. Casey, thank you. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Jenkins, thank you very much. And um, uh, we may uh, be in touch uh, later on. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys.